Hi everyone, um, welcome to English 1C. Um, this is section A13 and uh, summer session A from June 22nd today at, uh, through uh, July 25th. Right, so it's five weeks that um, this uh, summer session um, is going to be held. <coughs> um, so I'm your instructor for, for this class. Um, my name is David Siglos. I am a third year a PhD student uh, going into fourth year um, in the English department, right? Um, and as a PhD student, I do research, right? Um, and, and my research um, is on uh, Filipino American literature, right? Um, I particularly think about um, Filipino American relationship, right? Colonial relationship. Um, and the literary form, which is like the novel, the short stories, right? Um, I also think about Filipino unrecognizability, right? Um, and how Filipinos and Filipino Americans uh, do not have, you know, coherent identity. And I argue that that's a good thing, right? Um, but that's, you know, uh, if you're interested in that, you can talk to me about that in... Uh, and during office hours or whatever. Um, I'm also interested in Asian American literature, right, um, and Asian American theater mm -hmm. and performance. Um, and and that will kind of reflect on 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 the on the literature that um, we will be reading for this class, right, um, and. I got interested in uh, Filipino American literature first, probably because I am Filipino. Um, I was born in the Philippines and I moved to Las Vegas when I was 16, um, 16 years ago. Um, and I got my uh, bachelor's in English um, at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas um, three years ago, right? So, so a little um, info about me. Right, so as I mentioned in the email, um, this class do, does not have uh, live lectures or live meetings, uh, right? So everything uh, can be done at your own time, right? Um, as long as you're paying attention to, to the deadlines, right? And I will go into uh, details about that later as I go through the syllabus, right? Um, so yeah, we'll just uh, jump right into the syllabus. Um, and so make sure you have a copy of your syllabus um, as you're uh, listening to me, uh, just for reference, right? <clears throat> okay, so this is English 1C, summer 2020, right? Session A. Um, and I wrote on here American short stories, right? So um, this is... Uh, a composition class where you're supposed to learn how to how to write, how to argue, right? Um, how to read, um, but we are also as instructors are allowed to sort of create a theme or you know um, sort of um, format the readings uh, a certain way, right? Um, so for our class specifically, I'm. Um, we will be reading American short stories, right? Um, and that's something that's of interest to me. Um, but also, I think first, you know, um, I have online copies of all the short stories that we will be reading. So that means, you know, everything will be free. So that's good. Um, also short stories specifically, or especially because um, this is a very short class, right? Five weeks. So um, it didn't seem to make sense to read, you know, long novels. So I think, um, uh, you know, uh, multiple short stories um, is probably better for um, this kind of class. <clears throat> so um, that's why I decided to do short stories. Okay, so on top of your syllabus, that's my name and then my email address, right? So um, you will be communicating with me through my email address. I prefer um, uh, emailing me through um, 
my UCR email address than contacting me through iLearn, right? So, so yeah, so that will be your um, friend email address. <laughs> um, I'm also including my my cell phone number here, and so use it if you know for some reason there's you have some kind of emergency or if you prefer to uh, meet through FaceTime right um, you, you can use my uh, phone number um, and then for office hours right um, I'm available through Skype through FaceTime but and, and also through Zoom right so you have my information here um, for Skype, here's my email address, right? Um, FaceTime, you have my phone number, and then Zoom. Um, I, I prefer Zoom, right? But if for some reason you don't like Zoom or you don't have access to Zoom, you're welcome to, um, to choose any of the other um, apps, right? Um, and so office hours will be by appointment on only. Right, so you have to email me uh, that you want to meet, and then we can set up a time, um, and then I'll give you a Zoom link or whatever, right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to read through the syllabus and then explain it uh, a little bit. So course description, right? So English 1C constitutes the final course in the English composition series. Um, 1A explored several different genres of writing, 1B developed and sharpened your argumentative writing, um, and now in 1C you will apply those composition skills to a variety of texts in order to support a central thesis uh, statement through rigorous analysis and research. Right. Um, in 1C, reading becomes as important as writing. Right. That is, you will be more aware of reading as an interpretive act um, requiring uh, critical scrutiny and underly underlying presuppositions. Right? Um, you will deepen your understanding of the shaping power of language and its conventions and become more aware of the collaborative nature of generating meaning. Um, basic concepts of literary and or cultural theory will also be introduced. Right? And so, if you had just taken um, English 1A and 1B um, in the last year, um, you know, we will be using the same format, you know, for the essays that uh, we will be writing here. Um, we are using the same sort of, you know, essay format, right? You have your introduction, and then you have your thesis, right? And then you have your body paragraphs, and then your conclusion, right? Um, and so if you had just taken 1A and 1B, it, that's probably fresh for you. Um, but if you haven't, if, if you had not taken, uh, or if it's been a while since you'd, you've taken those classes, then you'll probably want to um, remind yourself, um, and I will help you uh, with that, right? And so, by the end of this course, you should be able to develop critical thinking and analytical skills, uh, which can be applied towards uh, written composition, right? Um, identify and utilize basic concepts of literary and cultural signs, um, read closely, critically, and resistantly, right? Um, distinguish between and explore the relationship between the form and the content of text, identify and analyze how context, form, and content work together to create meaning, right? Um, utilizing writing and revision skills to improve analytical insights and written communication, right? Um, and hopefully, right, uh, by the end of this course, hopefully um, you will learn how to read for pleasure, right? Um, these texts that I've, I've chosen are uh, personal or, yeah, they're, they're personal favorites, right? Um, these authors that we will be reading, um, I've sort of followed them and read uh, multiple works by them, and um, and and you know I, I enjoy reading them, right? Um, and so I, I hope that sort of joy and that sort of your pleasure that you get from reading, not just because you know you have to read it and you know we read it because we have to, but 
um, you know, if you can learn to uh, just enjoy it, right? Um, I think that's all I can ask, really. <laughs> um, okay. Um, required texts, right? So I also mentioned in the email, um, the only text that is required from you is arguing about literature, right? And make sure it's the third edition, right? And I've included a hyperlink here of uh, the website uh, where you can get a copy of um, the ebook um, to rent or to purchase, right? <clears throat> Um, and all, like I said, all the other readings will I, I will provide them for you, and they're actually already posted in um, iLearn, um, in course materials, right? So if you want to check them out, they're all there. So required tools: internet connection, right? Um, uh, YouTube access. That's where I will be uploading my lectures. Um, uh, Google Docs. I find Google Docs um, very convenient, especially with online teaching. <coughs> um, and so uh, I think that would be preferable. Um, I, I also use Microsoft Office, so <coughs> uh, we can do that. Um, Zoom also, right. Uh, oh, and I also want to mention, right, um, about the book. Um, the book is about $22 to rent um, and maybe 30 something dollars to purchase, right? Um, and, you know, financial insecurity is a real thing. And if for some reason um, you cannot afford the book, right? And you don't need to give me any reason, right? Uh, but if you can't afford it, um, just let me know email me privately and I will help you get the book, right? Um, no questions asked, so just let me know. Um, okay, so we will go now to the grade breakdown, right? So this class requires you to write two papers of increasing uh, sophistication, right? You will also be assigned regular exercises and take an essay uh, final exam, right? All essay assignments will be graded on the basis of how well they meet the requirements of the assignment. Um, papers will also need to meet the standards of written English and be free of significant grammar and structural errors, right? Um, yeah, so that's uh, uh, pretty basic stuff. <laughs> So grade breakdown, right, so the, uh, the first paper um, is 25% of your grade, right, so that's 1,100 words, and that's due, I think, week three, right. And then the second paper um, is also 25%, and that's 1,300 words, so slightly longer. Um, and that's due last day of finals week. Uh, I'll figure out the date for that uh, maybe next week. <clears throat> and, and then reading responses, right, 25%. Um, and that's the weekly responses that you will be submitting to me, um, the responses to, to, the, to the short stories. So each week we're reading a short story one or two short stories, right? Um, so all you need to do is write a 250 to 350 uh, word um, response or reflection about anything, whatever you find interesting about the story, right? Um, write about it um, and then email it to me, right? Um, this is a pass or fail uh, sort of grading system, right? So if you give me um, the required length for the response, you get um, an, you get the, all the points, right? Um, and if you don't give me anything, you don't get any points, right? Um, it doesn't matter, you know, 
how well you you read or you write the thing as long as you give me something you get all the credits right so just just give me something um, right so that's every week you're um, that you're submitting a response and then participation is 10 uh, percent right um, and really Participation is hard because of, of the online setup, right? So what I'm going to do is, so as, as long as you meet with me through Zoom or Skype or FaceTime or whatever, um, as long as you meet with me um, for office hours at least one once in the quarter, right? You will get all 10%, right? Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> just meet, just uh, come to office hours uh, at least one, uh, or at least once, right, um, in the quarter, and um, you will get the ten percent participation grade, right. But I encourage you to, you know, um, yeah, meet 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 with me in in office hours anyway, right. But yeah, as long as you do that at least once you'll get the automatic 10%. Um, okay. So final exam is 15%, right? Um, and that's usually just like an essay, sort of like a short um, essay, uh, as a type, as a, uh, as essay type exam, right? Um, but I'll, I'll talk more about that later. Okay, so grading, you have all your grading references here. And then required formatting, right? Um, so all papers, including first drafts, you won't really need a first draft, it's just the final draft. Um, so they all have to be MLA format, right? So this includes document formatting, such as one, what, one inch margins, Times New Roman, uh, 12 point font, uh, double spacing, right? Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so I will also give you for each uh, essay, you'll also get a prompt for specific requirements uh, of the paper, right? Um, and so you'll also get uh, information on how to um, format it properly, right? Um, I also have links here to our Purdue website um, for MLA, MLA formatting, right, and um, citation. So check them out if um, you're not familiar. All right, so support services, right. So I'm more than happy to support students with documented uh, disabilities and special needs. Uh, UCR abides by the American with Disabilities Act in Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 that provides federal and state agencies or programs for discriminating against, um, from discriminating, <laughs> uh, programs from discriminating against qualified individuals and uh, with disabilities, right? Um, students in this course who have a documented disability that limits or a major life activity um, which may have impact on your um, work in this class and for which you may require accommodations uh, should contact a counselor um, in disabled students programs and services um, as soon as possible right so I have the website here um, also hyperlinked in the in the syllabus um, additionally support services are provided for students through um, ARC um, academic Resource Center, right, um, and so ARC, um, as you probably know, um, sort of helps you um, with writing and composition usually, um, and so they'll be able to sort of read your draft, um, sort of comment on your draft, right, proofread it for you, um, and they do um, online tutoring, right, um, and so just click on this link and you should, this link will take you to the spring 2020 uh, online tutoring, but they told me that um, they will have a summer uh, 2020 uh, online tutoring. Um, 
And so, yeah, hopefully um, they'll have that on the website. Okay, so plagiarism and academic dishonesty. And academic, academic honesty, right? So don't plagiarize. Um, do your own work and take every effort to give credit where credit is due. So, you know, cite your sources if you, you're you required to have sources. Um, if I suspect plagiarism as dictated the code of conduct, you will fail the assignment and perhaps, perhaps the class, right? Um, right, so... I mean, it's really hard to, because the, the stories that I've chosen for this class, they're not very popular stories. Um, and so a lot of you will probably be reading them for the first time. Um, and not a lot of people have read them. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's hard to find anything about them uh, right now. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, don't plagiarize. All right, attendance, uh, late work, turning in assignments, right? Um, all essays must be submitted uh, via SafeAssign and iLearn by the due dates, right? Um, if you have personal emergency or other extenuating circumstances that prevent you from finishing your assignment on time or turning in your essay as scheduled, um, email me as soon as possible, right? Um, so we can discuss your situation. Um, personally, I don't really care too much about deadlines, um, but you know they're there for the sake of structure, right? Um, and so, try to follow them. But if for some reason, for whatever reason, or if you just don't feel like you know writing the paper uh, on time, right? Um, just email me, right? Um, and you don't need to give me a reason. Just email me that you're going to be late or you're going to submit your paper two, three, four, or five days later, um, and that's fine with me. Um, and as long as you're communicating with me, um, you, I, I will not penalize you, right? Um, or, yeah, your, your grade will not be uh, penalized. <laughs> and, yeah, but also think about it, right? If you're putting off your work, that means they keep adding up. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's probably better to spread them out and do them uh, um, within the deadline than, you know, wait for them and get, uh, and yeah, and then it, they get piled up. All right. So communication standards, right? Um, and so please check your university email uh, daily. I suggest connecting it to your iPhone, right? So a lot of my communications will be through um, through our mail, right? So your Gmail, um, UCR Gmail account, that's how you're going to um, get communication from me. Um, I will try to, as much as I can, every time I, um, I send you an email, I will also... Um, send you an email through iLearn just so you know there's like two there's duplicate email that gets sent to you just in case um, you don't get my gmail uh, email um, but yeah check your um, gmail um, every day because that's how I'm going to be contacting you and make sure you are using your UCR gmail not your personal Gmail, but your the your Gmail account that's been given to you by UCR, right? That's what I'm going to use, and um, I expect you to, to also use that just for, you know, um, legal and logistical reasons, I guess. Um, okay, so now we can go through the schedule for this class, right, so, so the, the breakdown, I think, is pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, and so the days here are really just suggestions, right? They're not, I mean, so, yeah, like it says Monday, just, just that's just for me to, like, organize things. Um, 
but obviously if you want to read all the readings on the Friday and then watch all the lecture videos in one day um, and then give give me your response you know that Sunday that's that's up to you you know you can do the readings and watch the lectures whenever you want right um, these days are just um, for me to kind of um, kind of break down the, the, the work, right? But um, the days that you're, that you're supposed to watch the video, right, that's the day that I'm uploading the video, right? So ideally, you know, I might be late one day or a couple hours, I know, um, depending on internet connection or whatever, because I'm also editing this, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm shooting the video and then editing it, you know, every week, right? And so I'm, I'm reading the, 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 the stories, you know, at the same time that you guys are, and then I'm also, you know, um, shooting the video and then editing it and then uploading it, you know, at the same time. So um, I can't do everything sort of too much ahead of time. Right. And so, yeah, so ideally, um, I would be um, uploading my first video on, on, the, on, a, on the Monday of, of the week, right? And then my second video will be on the Thursday, right? And so like today, um, it says here, read the syllabus, and then the video on that corresponding day will be about the syllabus. Right. And then Wednesday, you're supposed to, this coming Wednesday, you're supposed to read um, Arguing About Literature. That's from pages 1 to 42, right? And also the short story, Everything That Rises Must Converge, right? By Flannery O'Connor. Um, and the PDF is an iLearn. Right, and so the lecture video for Thursday will be about um, the readings um, on Wednesday. Right, does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, each lecture video will have a title, so you'll know what it's about. Right. Um, okay. And so the first reading response will be due on Sunday. Right, so it's due every Sunday of, of the week or the weekend, right? So that's 250, the 350 word response, reflection of the week's uh, short story, and then email it to me, right, as a Google Doc, uh, PDF, Word Doc, or, uh, or Word Doc attachment, right? All right, so, so the f first week is a little all over the place because, you know, there's an introduction and syllabus, but I think the second week is a little more normal, whatever that means. Um, okay, so, right. So for example, on Monday, you're supposed to read uh, pages 43 to uh, 97, right? And then the lecture video that I will upload on Monday will be about, um, that reading. Um, and then the Wednesday, A Temporary Matter by Jim Palahiri. Right. Um, yeah, so, so I think that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, email me if you have any questions or if you're confused about, um, about the scheduling. Um, right. Okay, so lastly, um, I'll just kind of go through a little bit, talk a little bit about the, the short stories that we're going to read for this class and just give you kind of, you know, uh, a little taste. Um, and, okay. So the first one that we'll be reading is uh, Flannery O'Connor. Um, and the short story is called Everything That Rises Must Converge, right? Um, and Flannery O'Connor, she's 
I don't know, she's one of my favorites, actually. Um, she's, her style is what would be called um, Southern uh, Gothic, right? So it's, um, she's from the South. Oh my God, I forget where in the South, but yeah, she's from the South. Um, and she, you know, grew up in a very sort of conservative, um, religious uh, family, community, right? Um, and and that's that that sort of religious and conservative upbringing is very much a part of uh, uh, of, of her writing. Um, but but she has a very um, good eye for sort of like describing, you know, describing people. Right, um, and describing people's or, or yeah, but body parts specifically, um, and and her tone is kind of bridging that gap between um, tragedy and comedy, right? Where you feel kind of uncomfortable um, w because you don't know whether to sort of like laugh or feel bad about <laughs> about what she's talking about right so so very fascinating writer and so i'm excited um uh to to reread that story <clears throat> so that's a flannery o'connor um, that you're supposed to read today um next week um we're supposed to read uh jumpa lahiri right um the short story is a temporary matter Right, uh, Jhumpa Lahiri is also one of my favorite writers. Um, um, she is originally from India, um, and then she, her family moved to um, to England um, for work, and then then they moved to the United States. Right, and uh, Jhumpa Lahiri has a PhD degree in um, in Renaissance, I think, or something like that, and. Um, but she's she's written two novels and two collections of short stories, and um, she she thinks about sort of you know that that sort of immigrant experience, right? Um, but but she has a very sort of sympathetic way of um, describing uh, the the immigrant experience, right? Um, Right, so I, I think you, you will also like Jhumpa Lahiri. Right, so, so to be honest, um, I, haven't, I have not read anything by Sandra Cisneros. Um, um, I've heard of her name, I've heard of her works, I've read about them, um, because she's sort of like one of the pillars of um, Chicana literature. Um, but I have not read anything by her. And so I thought this would be, a, 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 you know, this is also like an introduction for me um, to her work. Um, and Woman Hollering Creek um, is a pretty uh, popular short story. And so I just picked that one. And so we will be reading it for the first time together, if you haven't read it already. Some of you might have. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited about that. <clears throat> um, okay. So then we will read um, James Baldwin's uh, Sonny's Blues, right? Um, and, you know, Sonny's Blues will be very timely um, because, you know, it's, it's sort of, it, it tackles, um, uh, you know, um, racism in America and also, you know, the black experience, right? So, so with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement going on right now, I think um, uh, James Baldwin's work uh, will be very relevant to that, um, right? And it's just like a very well-written um, short story also and sort of very personal and, um, if I, I read it like, I don't know, like five years ago for a class, and I also wrote about it. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, it's about the, the relationship between uh, two brothers and and the, and the relationship with their parents. Uh, yeah, so, so I'm excited to reread that short story also. <clears throat> All 
Okay, and and then for the last week we will be reading uh, Gina Apostol. Um, the short story is uh, Punanan's Wake. Right. Um, I actually haven't read this short story before. Um, this will be my first time reading it also, um, but um, I've read Gina Apostol's novels. Um, she's um, a Filipino-American um, novelist and short story writer and um, critic, right? Um, and I think she's a great writer. And <clears throat> um, right, I and Kunanan's Wake is um, about Andrew Kunanan, who he was the, the person who killed um, Gianni Versace, right? Um, and not a lot of people know this, but um, Andrew Kunanan was um, half Filipino, right? Um, and, and so I, I just kind of like skimmed through um, um, this short story, and it is about um, Andrew Kunanan, um, the murder of... Um, of Gianni Versace, um, and yeah, and so Andrew Kunan is also very interesting to me um, because she sort of, or he, Andrew Kunanan, sort of embodies that Filipino unrecognizability that I'm talking about, and we can talk more about that later. Um, so that's that's my nod to Filipino American literature, um, and. Yeah, so I think those are all the short stories that we will be reading. I hope you find them. Um, I hope you enjoy reading them, actually. Um, and right, so sorry. So lastly, um, so the essays will be um, will, the the essays will be about one of our readings, right? Um, and so your essays. You will take one of your um, one of your reading responses, right, um, and then you will develop that into an essay, right. So that's that's the requirement for the essay, right. Um, and I think that's better because then you've already sort of like thought about uh, you already have some ideas, right, um, for writing the reading response, and then you just need to develop that into um, um, a longer um, argument. Right, so so pay attention to that. So if one of the stories um, is really sort of um, uh, interesting to you, right? So try to like be more thoughtful about reading it, um, and so try to be more thoughtful about writing a response for it, um, so that when you develop it into a, a paper, then um, it'll be easier for you, right? Um, so yeah, so right, so since the first paper is due on week three, right? Obviously, you will only be able to write about um, the readings on the first two weeks, right? So, so what, whatever sort of whatever uh, response you want to choose, um, develop that into a longer essay, right? Uh, and the same for the final paper, right? Um, choose one of your reading responses um, from the last two weeks and then develop that into a longer essay, right? Um, and yeah, we can talk more about that later. Um, I think that's it for now. And if you have any questions, even if they might feel trivial or silly to you just ask them anyway um and yeah just email me i'm you know like most of you you're i'm home all the time <laughs> um because you know pandemic um so yeah so i'll be i'll be very responsive and i'll you know um i'll answer your emails um, as soon as possible but um yeah, so that's it, and I will see you on the next video.